everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to Queen Amadai TV presents More Than Meets the Third Eye. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Don't forget that if you have not been receiving your notifications, make sure you double check to make sure you are still subscribed because you know how ScrewTube gets down to hate itself. Okay? All right. Hello, Melanated Brown, LeVar, General Over Tour, 444, <laughs> watching me. Okay, or yeah. Uh, Ladybug, Iyama Abe, One Who Cares. All right, Every Black Fire, Child Brooklyn, Staking My Funds, March, Kelvin's, Kelvin's Choice, Desmond. Okay. Uh, FBA Goddess wants to be a mod. Okay. Hello, Hiram X, Monica, Deron Walker, Compton Creole Goddess, Mark Ayers. It's black all the way from the UK. Okay, everybody, rain love. Let's get into it, people. Now, I have prepared this brief video for you all about the matrix and unplugging yourselves. Hello, Howard, beloved. Because, hello, Queen of Dion Pearly. Because some of our people, though they have very good intentions, they just can't seem to unplug themselves from the matrix. Now, for those of you who saw the movie, that's good. For those of you who didn't, please watch it, all right? Now, the original person who authored the book about the matrix, it was actually called The Third Eye, <laughs> okay? It was actually called The Third Eye, right? It was stolen from her and adapted for the screen by the Wachowski brothers, who are now the Wachowski sisters, or Wachowski sisters. Anyway, Sophia, uh, Sophia Stewart, a black woman, actually wrote this book, and it's very detailed, it's very, um, I would say, in life-altering, right? If you can if you can uh, understand the concept, if you can see into the allegorical text into which it was written. All right? So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to break it down, and I'm going to show you how to take the things from the movie The Matrix and, in fact, apply it to your own life so that you can unplug from this fake world that we live in, which is really a fairy tale where things are not as they seem. Okay? Most of the things that we have been taught are lies and BS. And the thing about it is, many of these social media platforms want to keep you thinking that way. That's why there's an all-out attack. A war has been waged on the truth speakers and the truth seekers and the truth teachers. Because they don't want a bunch of woke-ass people walking around here. That's what they don't want. Excuse my French. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Rain Love. Everyone, please give this video a like and a share. Okay? So I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this PowerPoint presentation that I have uh, made for you. Okay. Okay. Are you, thank you, Blake, for your contribution, beloved. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Okay. Are you stuck in the matrix? Now, in the movie, The Matrix, the lead character played by Keanu Reeves was named Neo. Neo is an anagram, okay? That anagram, Neo, stands for one because Neo was the one. It also represents the neocortex, which is the part of the brain that is part of the cerebral cortex, along with the archicortex and the paleocortex, which are the cortical parts of the limbic system. Now, forget all of that mumbo jumbo. Basically, in a nutshell, the neocortex part of the brain is what stimulates or is where your consciousness lies. All right? It is the consciousness part of the brain. It is involved in higher functions, such as sensory perception, like myself. I have what people call, or they used to call it back in the day, ESP, which is uh, extra sensory perception, because I am prophetic or psychic or whatever you want to call it, very intuitive. I dream things that come true. I see spirits um, and things like that. I always have since a child. You know, I see visions and, and those types of things. So that is uh, extra sensory perception. That means I have a higher level of consciousness. If you have a sixth sense, you have a higher level of consciousness. Now, some of you have a sixth sense, but you don't know because you have never 
um, worked on it. You may not have believed in it. You may have been suppressed from dealing with it because people may have taught you in church that it was uh, wicked. It was occult practices. You know, when I was a kid, I think I have told you all how my mother used to say I was a witch because I would say things and then the things would actually happen. That was nothing but me foretelling things of the future because I am prophetic. So maybe like my mother did me, because I guess she didn't know any better at the time, but maybe um, somewhere in your lives, you have been you know, told not to use your sixth sense. And so that being said, if you have not uh, used it and strengthened it and, you know, uh, accepted it, then it likely is dormant. That doesn't mean that you don't have it. It just means that you have not tapped into it and that you are not taking full use of it. Hello, Brandon, beloved. Now, uh, it is involved in higher functions such as sensory perception, generation of motor commands, spatial reasoning, conscious thoughts. All right? Conscious thoughts. And in humans' language. So with that all being said, when you raise your levels of consciousness, you are in fact using the neocortex. Hence, Keanu Reeves' name in the movie, Neo, because he was raising his level of consciousness when he went into the matrix because Morpheus was teaching him how to do so, was trying to enlighten him. If thy eye be single, then thy body is full of light, as it says in the Bible. If thy eye be single, then thy body is full of light. Not the two eyes, not the pair of eyes, the single eye, the third eye, which I call the first eye. If that eye is single, meaning if you are using this eye, then thy body is full of light, hence you will be enlightened, awakened from the slumber, activating the optic thalamus, uh, the pineal gland opening your third eye. Now, the next character we're going to talk about in the movie, The Matrix, is Morpheus. Now, Morpheus is uh, the god of dreams. For those of you who didn't know that, the word Morpheus is the Greek Roman god of dreams, okay? He shaped and formed the dreams through which he could appear to mortals in any form. This talent made Morpheus a messenger of the gods, able to communicate divine messages to sleeping mortals, uh, Greek, the Greek god of the dream world. That's why they called him Morpheus in the movie, because this was actually the Greek, the Roman Greek uh, god of the dream world. And remember, he told Neo in the movie that he was in a dream world, that this world that he lived in was not real. And basically telling him it's time to wake up, okay? Now, the character Trinity, the third part, this is the third part of the divine holy Godhead, okay? The holy Trinity, the father, the son, and the holy Trinity. Morpheus was a father figure because he was teaching Neo, who was like the son. And even in the movie, uh, someone called him Jesus. They called him the savior, said he was their own personal Jesus. Trinity was the third part of the Godhead, okay? That's why she was named Trinity in the movie. Now, remember, there was a scene from the movie when Trinity was in a room, and the room she was in was room 303. Now, remember, as I told you all about numerology plenty of times when we've discussed it, I told you that anytime you're doing numerology, anytime there's a zero involved in the number, you remove the zero. So if the word, if the number is 300, 300, you remove the zeros because they're irrelevant, and then you have three. If the number is 303, three, then that means you also remove the zero. And then you have 33. 33 is a very significant number in numerology, as I told you on many occasions. It is a reference to numerology. And uh, Jesus died at the age of 33. Uh, there's 33 vertebrae along the spine that leads to the optic thalamus, thus activating the pineal gland and opening the third eye. Also, it's called the third eye, which is, again, the number three. 33 degrees of masonry, okay? 33 is an angel number of very high spiritual and emotional uh, values. And the energy of 33 connects your physical life with that of the spiritual and keeps them intertwined. They were sending you symbolic messages, uh, subliminals, by having her in room 303. And if you knew about numerology, I'm sure you caught that, right? Or gematria. Okay, room 101. That is the number, Truth Queen. Thank you, Ayala, beloved, for your kind words and your contribution. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Thank you, Terry, beloved, for your contribution. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Now, room 101. That is another numerology reference. Neo was the one 
So hence, 101, you take out the zero and you can get 11, right? Which is also a very spiritual number that we've talked about. But also number one is a reference because Neo means it's an anagram for one. He was the one. Morpheus was the teacher of him. Okay, now Morpheus is, is there in the movie to awaken Neo from the slumber. He tells him he's in a dream world and the world isn't what he thinks it is. I already told you that part, but nevertheless, at the end of the day, Morpheus was like his sensei, like he was teaching him. He was trying to enlighten him and wake him up for the, from the slumber to help him unplug himself from the matrix where everything was only, you know, a bunch of uh, fake things that he had been fed, misinformation that he had been given, uh, false narratives that had been pushed onto him as they have been pushed onto us in reality. Consciousness. Now, the big deception, the big deception in the movie had Neo and others spooled. Now, this also applies to us, for many of us are asleep and simply refuse to awaken. And I keep telling you that if our people, what it says in the Bible, my people perish for lack of from lack of knowledge. This is true. They perish from lack of knowledge. You could apply that to what's going on right now with the pandemic, with the vaccine, and all of these other things. My people perish from lack of knowledge because they know not, because they think not, because they do not, and they study not. All right? And they listen not because some people think they know everything and there's no need to listen to you or me because they've already got it all figured out, though they've not read, researched, or studied a darn thing. All they're doing is going off of emotion, which is the last thing anyone should be doing at this time. That's right, beloved. Knowledge is everything. Now, they walk around in a dream state, sleepwalking their ways through life like zombies. Now, you must access the power of the neocortex and raise your consciousness to a higher level of thinking, a level void of emotion that uses only logic and reason. You see, emotion is what blinds us from the truth. You have to use critical thinking skills, common sense. Otherwise, you will not be able to accept the truth when you hear it or see it. You will not be able to consume it. You will not be able to take it in because the truth will be too much for you. They say the truth hurt, and yes, often it does. But would you rather be hurt by the truth or destroyed by a lie? That's what you should ask yourself. Would you rather be hurt by the truth or destroyed and consumed by a lie? Now, in one scene of the movie, I call this yin and yang. Because in the fight scene in the movie, do you remember, or the training scene, when Neo was being trained by Morpheus, and Morpheus had on all black with white trim. And then Neo had on the opposite. He had on all white with black trim. Some of you probably didn't even catch that or notice it, right? At the end of the day, that was representative. That was a subliminal for yin and yang. Now, in ancient Chinese philosophy, yin and yang is a concept of dualism, describing how seemingly opposite or contrary forces may actually be actually be complementary, interconnected and interdependent in the natural world and how they may give rise to each other as they interrelate to one, to one another. Both halves are chasing after each other as they seek a new balance with one another. Now, if you look at the white part of the yin and yang sign and it has a speck of a black dot and the other side is black with a speck of a white dot, just like the outfits that Neo and Morpheus are wearing, meaning that in everything good, because you know they use white to represent everything good, right? That's what they do. They say, oh, you don't tell a little white lie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the good guys wear white. The bad guys are supposed to wear black. You know how they do it. So if we're using their ideology, then with the the side that is white with the black speck and the side that is black with the white speck would represent in everything good, there's a little bit of bad. and everything bad, there's a little bit of good. And anything good can be used for bad and anything bad can be used for good. It just depends on the intention of the person who is using it. Okay? It depends on the intention of the person who is using it. Absolutely. Beatzilla says Jacob and Esau. Absolutely. So it is the intention of whatever you are doing, because you can use something for good that was meant for bad. You can use something for bad that was meant for good, right? For example, fire, as I told you before, fire is something that you can use for good. You can use it to cook your food, to warm your house, 
right? But you could also be someone who's nefarious and then go out and use it to commit arson or use it to kill somebody. People do things, you know, that's why when some people say, you know, I work with crystals. I use a lot of crystals in my spiritual work and, and things like that. And some people say, oh, well, crystals, that's a cult practice. Oh, crystals, you know, people use that for witchcraft. Well, yes, yeah, some people do use them for witchcraft. That's because they're witches. Uh, that's because they practice and study Wiccan, right? Wicca. And so they're into the Wiccan religion or whatever they want to call it. That's their their idea of spiritualism. I don't practice Wicca. I'm not into it. And I'm not a witch. So if I'm using crystals, it's not for nefarious purposes. Crystals came from the Most High. They were put here on, on earth. Obviously, the Most High made them. But I find it interesting that people that say that crystals are used for witchcraft don't have a problem going to the pharmaceutical companies or going to the pharmacy to get medicines and win. In fact, pharmaca, the root word, pharmaca, a pharmaceutical, right, a pharmacy, that literally means sorcerer. Uh, so what's witchcraft? Taking medicines made by men or using crystals to heal yourself that are made by the most high. And those same people also love diamonds, do they not? Isn't diamonds, aren't diamonds crystals? I think so. So miss me with it. It all depends on what the person is using it for. Matrix and agents. Now, matrix and agents. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the word matrix in the movie meant made tricks. And in fact, not even just in the movie, in real life. Matrix. If you're living in something that's not real, it's fake, and they've got you plugged into it to keep you hook, line, and sinker, just fooled, it's made tricks. They made a whole bunch of tricks to keep you fooled, to keep your mind, you know, keep your brain washed and stuck on the plantation, stuck to the matrix so that you can't get out and really live your best life and find out who you really are supposed to be and where you really came from and all of those things. And also in the movie The Matrix, there were plenty of agents, right? The agents, we have those in real life. We call them haters, okay? Everything in that movie is in real life. There are agents in the movie, The Matrix, that were trying to stop Neil from doing what he was supposed to do. They were trying to dissuade him from doing what he was supposed to do. They were trying to use all types of tricks and trickery and Jedi mind tricks and sleight of hand and all of that BS. We have those same people in real life and we call them haters because that's what they are. They try to stop you from staying on course. They try to take away your focus. They try to make you undisciplined and keep you untrained and keep your mind brainwashed and all of that. Make you suffer from the same cognitive dissonance that they in fact suffer from. These are what agents do. Agents want to criticize you and hold you back. That's the same thing as haters. That's what the agents did in the movie. Now, the guy who wanted the steak, remember the guy in the movie who wanted the steak? He wanted to go back into the matrix, even though he knew the truth. He'd already found the truth, but yet he wanted to go back into that matrix. And he even sat there and said, as he ate that steak, he said, Queen, you are a spiritual being. Thank you, Terry, beloved. We all are spiritual beings, though some of us are devils. Some of us are devils, but most of us black folk are spiritual beings living a human experience. Now listen to this. The guy, remember the guy who wanted to eat the steak and he was sitting there eating it and he said, oh, I know this steak is not real, but it just tastes so good. Y'all remember he said that? You know who, who that reminds me of? That reminds me of people who don't take care of themselves. They sit there and eat all these, you know, junk food, McDonald's with all the chemicals and all this BS fast food is just so detrimental to your health and well-being. And then you try to tell them, hey, listen, you should try a plant-based diet. Or if you're going to eat meat, why don't you just try to eat like maybe some chicken and fish? You know, stay away from red meat and pork. But they say, oh, it just tastes so good. Well, you're not going to taste it at all if you're dead right from clogged, clogged arteries, high blood pressure, a stroke, you know what I'm saying, heart disease. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice, but I'm just saying these things have been known to happen. But at the end of the day, he said, I know the steak isn't real, but it just tastes so good. He wanted to go back into that matrix. And you know why? Because I'm going to tell you something, people. It is a big responsibility to know the truth and live the truth. You see, when you find out the truth, and then you realize that you've been living foul all this time, that you've been living wrong all this time. And you say, you know what? I've got to get my stuff together. I realize now that I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. And so instead of working on the outside of myself, which is working on the avatar of myself, which is trying to make sure that I look good, I need to be trying to fix the inside of myself. I need to be trying to fix my spirit. I need to be trying to get my consciousness up. I need to be trying to raise my vibrations. I need to be trying to eat healthy so I can rise to my God-like self and activate my optothalamus, my pineal gland, open my third eye, 
when you start realizing those things, see, those things aren't easy to do. Those things all require discipline. But many of us don't have discipline. Many of us make excuses and procrastinate about the things that we know we should do because we're so busy and so complicit and complacent and doing things that we should not do. Some of us smoke cigarettes and we know cigarettes cause cancer, but we smoke them. We say, well, I can stop anytime I want to. Well, if you could, why haven't you? And why don't you want to stop if you know that it can potentially kill you? I'm just saying. And then some of us drink too much alcohol and then we say, well, you know, I don't have to drink. Well, if you don't have to, why are you doing it? I'd like to know. Some people don't want to unplug from the matrix because they are blissful in their ignorance. They say ignorance is bliss, and in many occasions it's true. Because at the end of the day, some people just can't handle the truth. They cannot make themselves be disciplined enough to do what needs to be done to live their best life. They can't stay away from negative people, negative thinking. They can't stay away from doing things that bring them up nothing but harm. Some people like to sit around and gossip about other people, talk trash about other people, try to kill other people's spirit, try to kill other people's dreams, try to tell them they're not going to do nothing, try to tell them they can't be nothing, try to tell them why things aren't going to work instead of telling them how it can work, instead of giving them good ideas, they only want to give them bad advice. And then when you tell them that they're a hater, they swear you are attacking them. They swear you're hating on them. Some people feel like they're above criticism, but yet they criticize everybody else. And when you tell them something that's a criticism and you actually tell them only for their own good so they can be better. They don't want to listen. Yes, Adia, absolutely. The comfort zone is easier. They don't want to listen. And in fact, when you tell some people certain things, they'll say, oh, you're just a hater. Let me tell y'all something. There are some people who anything you say critical of them, they deem you a hater. It doesn't make you a hater because you're telling someone something for their own good. Now, if you're just telling somebody something to hurt their feelings or make them feel stupid or make them feel like they can't accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, yes, then that would make you a hater, no less. But if you are telling someone something to help them and out of your own, out of their own best interest and from the heart, that doesn't make you a hater. And also, some people think you're a hater when you disagree with them. If somebody's disagreeing with you, that doesn't make them a hater. That just means they have a contrary opinion. If somebody has a contrary opinion, why do they have to be a hater just because they don't agree with your idea or your way of thinking? And if you think that everyone should, in fact, agree with everything that you say out of your mouth and everything that you do, then you are the hater. You are hating on truth. Because everything that we all say is not always the truth. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we have the wrong information. Sometimes we get facts distorted. So if someone comes along and tries to correct you, there's no need to get upset. Just fact check what they have said, and then maybe you'll find out that, well, they were actually telling the truth. But they don't have to always agree with you. Now, when people are being low down and nasty and calling your names and, you know, like stupid and dumb and said, oh, you don't know nothing. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. That's clearly not someone who's talking to your best interest. But when somebody sits down and tries to tell you something and they're putting it to you in such a way so that it makes sense and so that they can spare your feelings and you still get upset and all in your feelings and talk about, oh, you're just a hater. They're not the hater. You're just somebody who hates the truth. Some people can't accept the truth and they think everything has to go their way. Everything can't go all about way all the time. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes people agree with you and sometimes they don't. All right? So... Ignorance is bliss. And the guy who was eating the steak, he was an agent and he was ignorant. He was uh, blissful in his ignorance. Now, people enjoy the deception because it's easy and requires no discipline. Raise your levels of consciousness and become your God-like self. Don't stay complacent and complicit in your own demise and being low vibrational and being pessimistic instead of being optimistic. Unplugging from the matrix of life. You know, old habits are hard to break. It takes hard work to do this. And it's very hard sometimes to do the right thing. Very hard to do the right thing sometimes, but it's easy to do the wrong thing. I promise you, it is so easy to do the wrong thing. You don't even have to think twice sometimes to go out there and do something foul. Like some people just really don't have to think twice. But to do the right thing takes a special amount of discipline and a special type of person. That's why devils can do so much dirt and low down things and then act like they fear for their lives and all of that. It's so hard for devils to do the right thing. Absolutely. Lee Harp says old habits die hard. Exactly. Now, 
to make good decisions, that's also hard. It's hard to choose healthier ways of living. It's hard to stay positive and stay away and avoid negativity. I told you all about the girl who would always call me with a sob story, always saying something so downtrodden and just putting all of her low vibrational energy on me when I would be so upbeat. And by the time that phone call ended, I was drained completely. She was a psyche vampire. That's what I called her because she was literally sucking all the energy out of me. I finally told her one day, do not call me again until you have something positive to say. Every time you call, you always talking low vibrational and being negative. And I don't like that. I don't mesh well with negative people because I try to remain in the positive. No matter what is going on, I try to find a bright side of it. And I told her, now, when you first start telling me all these negative things and telling me all these problems you were having and all this stuff going on about yourself, I really thought maybe you just needed some encouragement, some inspiration, somebody to motivate you. So I told you things to help you along the way to make you feel better about yourself. But none of that seems to have worked because yet again, here we go with you telling me a sob story. It seems to me that you want a pity party and I'm not going to throw it for you. So I told her, don't call me again until you have something positive to say and have a better frame of mind and have a better level of consciousness. You know, she didn't call me for a month. And when she finally did, she was talking positive. Sometimes you have to let people know. And sometimes you have to say things harshly, but you say it out of love. It's called tough love. You don't have to hurt their feelings when you say it. You don't have to call them names. Oh, you so stupid. Oh, you just get on my nerves. And no, you can tell them in a nice, polite way. Listen, I don't deal with negativity and you shouldn't deal with it either. Why are you being so pessimistic? Now, don't come back until you are optimistic and have a better look on life. A better outlook on life. Okay? Break bad habits and build good ones. That's what we all should be doing. Breaking bad habits and building good ones. Now, things aren't always as they seem. Things aren't always as they seem, right? For example, you know, there could be something going wrong in your life and you feel like you've no way out. You don't even look for a solution because you've just already made up your mind. It's not going to happen. Nothing's going to change. This is going to be this, that, and third. You know, like somebody was telling me the other day about this stuff that's going on, and I'm not going to say exactly what I'm talking about because y'all know how screw tube is, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody was talking about this whole thing that's going on right now and saying, oh, they're going to start making us do this and they're going to make us do that. I said, they're not going to make me do a darn thing. That's what they're not going to do. And if you're sitting there saying that, then you've already accepted defeat. I don't accept defeat. That's what I don't do. So I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to make me do anything. Because then nobody going to make me do something I don't want to do. And that's just a fact. All right? So when you talk like that, you're not looking at the bright side. And in fact, you're being pessimistic. And you may not even realize it. Because this person's always positive. But I thought that was being negative and looking at things on the, on the negative side. And also accepting defeat. When you say someone's going to make you do something and you know that's not what you want to do, then that's accepting defeat. Okay? And I don't accept defeat under no circumstances. We should always be like water, as Bruce Lee said. Be like water. You see, water takes on the form of whatever environment it is in. If you pour water into a glass, then it takes on the shape of the glass. If you spill it on the table, then it's just laying there, right? If you put it in a tray, in an ice tray, it turns into little squares. It is shaped like that right? If you put it in a cylinder, it's shaped like the cylinder. Water takes on the form of whatever you put it in. It can be both a liquid and a solid. So that's how we should be. We should take on whatever type of environment we're in. And the reason you should do that, it's not being fake. It's because, you know that old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do? At the end of the day, Sometimes it's a matter of survival. And I don't mean that people out here doing nefarious things and you're around them, you do nefarious things too. No, I'm talking about as it means and pertains to survival. How do you think animals survive in their natural habitats? They have to adjust and adapt to what's going on around them. Now, that is why I'm telling you, Black people, if you are living, and we certainly are, living amongst devils, we are living amongst devils who clearly have nefarious intentions. And so you can't be sitting here like a lamb. You can't be as gentle as a lamb with devils. If you're gentle as a lamb with devils, then the devils will eat you alive. You have to be as a lion. That's what you have to do. You have to be as a lion. You cannot be a lamb in the midst of devils. They will eat you alive. Yes, Terry says a chameleon. Absolutely, beloved. 
So with that all being said to all the scared to death Negroes out here talking about, oh, I forgive you and this, that, and the third, and all of that crazy stuff, you need to wake up. You need to get it together. Because in the Bible, for those of you who are Christians and you read the Bible on the regular, then you should know that in fact, you should know that even Jesus fought back. And if you don't believe that, then I suggest you go read it again and again and again. Okay, because clearly they sold their clothes and garments for weapons. I mean, it does tell you that one of the soldiers or one of the disciples cut off the Roman soldier's ear. How do you think he cut off his ear? By accident? No, he was fighting. You see. And he cut it off with a, so with a sword. So where did he get the sword from? Well, I'm glad you asked because they had weapons. Now, with that all being said, if the disciples could defend themselves and Jesus, I suggest you do the same. Stop all that poppycock talking about, oh, I forgive and this, that, and the third, but people that didn't even ask your forgiveness because you sound niggers. All right? Now, I'm telling you this for your own good. I'm not saying go out here and start anything. I'm saying defend yourself at all times. You only have one life to live, and at the end of the day, if you don't protect yourself, who will? At the end of the day, self-preservation is the first law of nature. With that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. I would like to thank you all for tuning Black in once again to Queen Amadai TV presents more than meets the third eye. I hope that my take on the matrix and ex explanation of it, you know, um, gave you some insights into how that movie was so powerful and it was so in-depth and it was so deep that it was really giving you numerous gems if you paid attention. And if you missed all of that, go back and watch it again. Go back and watch it again because that movie was the epitome of the third eye. All right? And since this is a channel all about the third eye and the pineal gland, that's why I thought it was appropriate to discuss it on here. Okay? You need to be meditating. You need to be getting enough rest. You need to refrain from taking... You know, things that are uh, bad for your body, your health, your mental health as well. You do know that when you eat foods that are full of chemicals, that affects the brain as well, your psyche, your consciousness. It calcifies the pineal gland. You know they want to calcify your pineal gland. That's why they put fluoride in your water and in your toothpaste. If you can, buy fluoride-free toothpaste. That was wonderful. Love the Matrix. You did a great job. Thank you, love, level uh Level Turner, thank you, beloved, for your kind words and your contribution. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Make sure that you're doing things to build up your mental strength as well as your physical strength. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of water, not tap water. Make sure you're drinking plenty of distilled, purified spring water, alkaline water, right? Squeezing lemon in your water makes it more alkaline, too. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you what I do. At the end of the day, eat a healthy, balanced diet. Try to eat as many fruits and vegetables as you can and stay away from as much meat as you can. And please, whatever you do, do not eat that trash that they sell in fast food joints. It's not good for you. And you know the enemy owns all that stuff, right? You know the enemy's making a killing off our people going to those places, right? Spending $10 a day when you go to lunch at work. Pack your lunch and take you something healthy and take you some water to drink and stop drinking those beers and Hennessy and all that stuff. All those people that own those companies hate you. They do, it's true. All those people that own those companies hate us. Please pay attention. That's why they put the liquor stores in our neighborhoods. That's why they they send the, uh, the advertisements for 40 ounces and all that stuff to black people. You don't see them trying to advertise that stuff to their own people. They try to advertise it to you and me. All right? And also pay attention. If you saw that cartoon movie, was it Black Dynamite? I think that was it, the movie with uh, Michael J. White, where they had this, some type of uh, malt liquor they were selling in the black neighborhoods and was making all the men's private parts shrink. That was a subliminal. Y'all better pay attention now. That 40 ounce that you be drinking, Coke 45 or whatever, Old English and all that other old stuff y'all drink, some of you. It may not make your pain shrink, but I tell you what, it may make your brain shrink. So please pay attention, all right? Uh, wake up from the slumber or you will die in your sleep. All right? Elevate and motivate. That's what you need to be doing. Did they take my wrench away, queen? Uh, Monica, I'm not sure, beloved. I can't remember. 
I might have taken your wrench away. Now, let me tell y'all like this. Let me say this. I'm glad you asked that question. At the end of the day, people, ScrewTube does take some of y'all's wrenches, but I took some of the wrenches from certain people who have not been to not one single mod meeting. Now, if you haven't been to a mod meeting and I don't have your, your uh, email information by now to send you the links to the meetings, then you need to send me your information so that I can send you your invite to the next meeting because we have people infiltrating chats. Uh, on black people's channels, we have agents, honey, out here acting like they want to be mods and this, that, and the third. And a lot of them uh, be working for the undercover wannabe would be if they could be white supremacists. So I have to be careful and screen mods. So if you have not been any me been in any meeting, I in fact cannot allow you to continue to be a mod until I see your face and know that you are who you say you are. Because we have people in disguise, honey. Nicole says I haven't been to a meeting. Well, Nicole, you need to send me your um your email information so you can come to the next meeting. Because I'm telling y'all, I'm not playing no games because it's getting hot out here in these YouTube streets and it's a whole lot of hating going on and I don't trust anybody that I can't see. All right? Because we have people out here making fake accounts and they can put black people's faces on it. I don't know. You could be a wannabe, would-be white supremacist for all I know. So unless I have personally talked to you and seen your face and my other mods who I know from day one have seen your face, it is what it is. All right? I don't mean no harm, honey, but I got to protect the throne. That's what I got to do. All right. So you don't have it no more. Um, I may not have had it. Nicole, if it was in a different name other than your name that's in the chat, send it to me again. And Monica, send me your email address. Okay. So I can send you all. Um, YouTube is competitive. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, Yayla. Absolutely, beloved. And they hate us too. That's just a fact. They just straight up hate us. All right. So we got to do what we got to do. We have to be, you know, we have to uh, keep on pressing forward, black people, because the knowledge has to get out. And I want you all to tune in this evening for the 6 p.m. live. Don't let them fool you and post up some old crazy stuff. Some Oh, it went live hours ago. Or, oh, she going live at 10 o'clock. No, y'all know I do the daily vitamin at 6 o'clock. Now, I may do more than one, which I usually do, but. The first one's going to start at 6 o'clock. That's all day, every day. And if you're on the first one, then you'll know what time the next one starts. And if you can't find it, I'm going to be posting the links. My mods are going to be posting the links. They're going to be on my um, Instagram and Twitter. I'm going to post it on my Instagram and Twitter in the bio on both my Instagram channels and on Twitter. My mods are going to be posting it on those places too, uh, on Instagram and Twitter and whatever. So, and I... um put up a, a note on YouTube in the community. Now they might take it down because we know how they hate. So you can't depend on YouTube, but on the other places, please go and follow me on those on Instagram at Queen Amadai Shakur. Also on Instagram at divine underscore goddess underscore 27. On Twitter at dgoddess27, Brighton and Patreon at Queen Amadai Shakur. With that all being said, y'all, we have to do what we have to do to get the, the news out in the message, honey, because they are really attacking. But I want y'all to tune in at six because I'm going to be addressing that. I'm going to be addressing the all-out attack and war on the new black media. So y'all make sure you share that information, all right? I'm going to be posting the link in a little bit. And so y'all make sure y'all share that because at the end of the day, I'm going to put them on blast. I mean, they want to play games. Hey, let's get ready to rumble, okay? All right, let's do it. Let's get it popping. Hey, what I hate, let's show them how we can do it. Now, with that all been said, I would like to guard the third option. <laughs> Okay, General Lovator, thank you, beloved. Listen, just send me your email, okay? Send me your email. Now, listen, let me get this distinct. Everyone who is sending me an email to be a mod, make sure that you send the email to the Queen Amadai Shakur channel, okay? Send your email for mods on that. Any other emails that you have far as uh, YouTube changing my times, or you see something shady and you want to screenshot it and send me the screenshots, please send those screenshots to Authentic Black Goddess TV, to that separate email. Because my emails are getting too flooded, you know what I'm saying? And when it gets too flooded, I can't go through everything or whatever. And so please do that, okay? General Louverture said, what is your email? I'm about to put it in the chat right now, beloved. There you go. Queen Amadai Shakur at gmail.com for mods and those who want to be mods and for the uh, mod meetings. And then for the other people who send the screenshots. 
I'm going to send you the email that I want you to send to. Authentic Black Goddess TV. Okay. For screenshots. I meant screen for screenshots, not fro. I accidentally put fro, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So that all being said, I want to thank you all for tuning Black in once again to Queen Amadai TV presents More Than Meets the Third Eye. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be going to I'm gonna be going live again, people. I'm gonna be going live again on the uh true crime channel. Gonna be going live again on the true crime channel and the paranormal channel. It's 1 30 now. I'm going to be going live on there at about 2.30. All right, so get ready. Make sure you tune in to those channels at 2.30 to the uh, True Crimes channel. And then more than me, uh, um, Beyond the Realm, Queen Amada TV presents Beyond the Realm. I'm going on there at 3 o'clock. So make sure you tune black in, all right? Okay, you're welcome, one who cares, beloveds. So I'm going to post those times. As soon as I post the videos, I do pre-scheduling. I'm going to post that on my Instagram, Twitter, and all of that. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning Black in. Please like and share this video. And until next time, Rose, I will talk to you all again soon. Peace.